I'll call the meeting. Commissioners, Cal County Commissioners, uh, meeting to order. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approve the minutes of February 10th. Make the motion we approve the minutes of February 10th. Second. Any further discussion? All those in support of the motion say aye. And aye. Aye. And so voted. Public input? No public input? Oh, yeah, go ahead. So it's my understanding you'll be talking about the $2 million and the um, attendance record of some of our delegation numbers later on today, right? I don't need to ask about it. Say that again. A little, a little later on in the meeting, you'll be talking about the $2 million issue. Yes. Possibly the farm and possibly the attendance record of some of our del excuse me, delegation numbers. I'm not sure about the second part, but uh, we will be discussing that today, the $2 million okay. request. I'm talking about the delegation numbers at the subcommittees. Are they meeting today? No, but they have been trying to meet, and then they apparently have not been meeting. They have been talking about the... Uh, uh, they haven't had a quorum. They haven't had a quorum the last two weeks. In the last week. <clears throat> we'll be talking about it. So they can't discuss or approve anything. Right. They don't have a quorum. Right. That's not our problem. Okay. Can you get... Uh, yeah, um, I, I'd like to do Wanda really quick, if she can come up. Okay. Uh, Wanda, uh, she told us in the f uh, as we're finalizing the budget uh, that she may be getting uh, an increase in the grant and uh, also a grant renewal. Grant renewal, yeah. I just got the paperwork for grant renewal, mm -hmm. and it's due to the state on March 21st. Okay. So I just wanted to, yeah, I sense. haven't started doing anything with it yet, oh, okay. but I just wanted to check and so I make sure I do it the right way. And um, mm -hmm. Chuck's work, Chuck and Kathy are working on it currently, and so is Wanda. Um, also, what, what did they do? why are they working on it? Numbers, uh, you know, because uh, um, she needs numbers from last year to this year. Um, okay. The quarterly report. Right. I have to turn in a quarterly report that Chuck and okay. um, Kathy haven't done before. We have Kathy. an itemized budget, that, that $25,000, that comes from the state. Well, it, it's it comes itemized. from the federal government right. yeah. through yeah. the state yeah. to us. Yeah. Um, and there was an increase of $7,500 that they gave us because of... I guess they got a whole lot more that they distributed through everyone. But I want to make sure, because of the going through the committee, budget committee, mm -hmm. not the budget, no, the, the grant the, the grant review committee. committee. Um, right. I think that's an ongoing grant that's been going on for as long as I've been here. Um, but I think she should still submit a copy to them. Okay. Especially you know. since it's yep. going up. Right. So. Did you bring a copy with you? I have a blank copy of the Perfect. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I, I'll yeah, you make you a copy okay. and bring it in. Yeah, I, you can just give it to Cheryl and okay. I'll forward it off to them. Um, okay. I haven't started, like I said, it yeah, just that's fine. came through, so I haven't started, like, in okay. Well, that's fine, just as long as they get it and, you know, so they see what's in the requirements. It's nothing new, right? It's the same, same one you've been doing? It's the same as we've always been doing. Great, so if you just give a copy to Cheryl and yeah, I just wanted to you know to update you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Wanda. Uh, next will be Howie. Uh, on the NBC copier contract. In your packet you have a Great America. By way of explanation, copier, part of the contract that you already approved is for the, the service component. 
the copier is one of the few pieces of equipment that nobody should actually own. So quarter actually coordinates through third parties depending on the rate they get. That it's always it's always been leased. This is nothing new. This has been standard practice for for, for a decade. But it is a contract that it comes before the commission. Any questions? So I have a motion. Are we sure of the uh, that this is? Do I hear a motion before we discuss it? Sure. If I hear a motion to accept the contract agreement. We don't have one. Um, we will, Shouldn't we read we it want to move on? Yeah. Oh. Well, normally we have a motion, and then we discuss it. Okay. Do, do we have this copy of currently? We do. And then have we had it? It's, this is the same arrangement we've had for a decade. I'll make a motion. We accept the agreement with Porter Office Machine Corporation, in North Conway. I right hear a second. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Now we can discuss it. Thank you. So, Howie, um, this is the same copy you've had, right? Correct. Okay. And so, can you? I'm just trying to understand why it's coming here. Well, because you, you requested Again. the commission's required that requested that right. anything that that requires a contract mm -hmm. ordinarily it, it's it's a it's pretty much just a, a vendor assignment, but it is technically an, an agreement. Yeah. I'd like to know, Mr. Chairman, you know, why is it going through Great American Financial Services? Why aren't we leasing this directly? We lease the equipment from Porter, but Porter being smarter than the average bear doesn't want to own inventory. So they they sub out all the financing, fairly typical. Same way that you're, if you buy a Chevy, it's you're going to be financed through GMAC. The financing arm is a separate co company from the the, 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 right. the one making the agreement. And, and if you lease, say, uh, from another vendor, they would go through uh, another financial uh, institution. They even Canon doesn't have, you know, have their own leases. Notice that it's for 48 months. Yeah. yeah. Right. At $319 per month. It's a little over $3,800 a year. And this is, and what is this for? This is to lease a copier? Correct. What are we doing? And it's an old copier. No, this is actually, it's, it's part of the copier that we got as part of your other agreement. So this is essentially phase two. We have the service agreement. This is with Porter, and this is for the actual equipment. So this is a this is a new piece of equipment. It's brand new copy. Brand new copy. The old one went upstairs. This is the, the new one. Uh, we um, we're supposed to be putting all these copiers together in one contract. We found out that that's not any savings. Is that correct? Most all, almost eight. all our copies go through Porter. How he finances it is up to no, 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 no. I mean to the county. The delegation had asked to put it all together, one contract. Most of them go through Porter. Do you have one that, that isn't, or the jail doesn't have one? The jail, I think the, I think the sheriff has one. The sheriff. Well, the sheriff just got a new one from Porter. I know okay. that. But my understanding is that it's not any more beneficial to have one contract with Porter. For all our copiers? I think it is. I think it's beneficial. Did you tell me that, that they came in and said it wasn't any, or you checked what? with Porter? Yeah, we met with Porter, yeah. we talked to him, Okay. and he he gets the state bid. So we're actually using the state bid okay. um, by going through Porter. And by going through Porter, he, you know, he knows our machines and some of the parts are interchangeable, so we don't have to have like you know six different toners on the shelf. That my point is, one contract with Porter for all our machines. Right now, this one happens to be with a nursing home, right? Right. Now we must have other contracts. Right, and all through Porter. All through Porter. Right. Correct. Except I know there's one machine that isn't through Porter. I believe it's in the sheriff's office. Okay. But he does have another machine with Porter because when he came on. It was through another vendor. Mm -hmm. So as he gets new machines, they, they will go through Porter. Okay. 
because he just got one this fall. Yeah. Go ahead. I think somebody ought to read this contract before we sign it. The first thing they say is they can raise the rate for for any documentation that they have or investigation uh, costs. That's number one. Number two, it's not cancelable. There's no agreement here, no get out clause. Uh, I'm not voting for it until we have a chance to uh, sit down and discuss it with Mr. Porter and make it fit into what we've been doing with all other contracts sure. for the last year. You want to table it? Yes. All right. We'll table it. You know, would you have <coughs> Mr. Porter come in or, yeah. yes, or talk to us motion. or something? You make a motion to <laughs> table it? I'll make a motion to table it. <laughs> Do I hear a second? second. All right. All those in support of the motion say aye. 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 <laughs> Table the. Is there a closing date on something? <laughs> no, but we, we have a good relationship with. Okay. Good. Mark knows that, that the, the wheels of government sometimes move slowly. So, And he's also interested in, in maintaining the, the county contract. His cost per copy, the way that we pay, is actually very favorable. So we're not we're paying I mean, 0 0.005, half a cent. For black and white copies, it's a very It's the cheapest rate. I've seen. Yeah, and it includes all maintenance and parts. So, and he's willing to extend that rate to any other part of the the, the county public <coughs> to be using. Okay. You have anything else with the nursing home? Yes. Uh, last week we talked about uh, the prime time yep. of care. Uh, instructed Lori to um, uh, to work. With the vendor, she did. She had everything corrected that our attorney requested. And Lori, were there any problems? Or? Uh, no, no. I, I think not everything that was requested. I think we determined what was the main, what right. our main issues were. Right. Um, I did send you their statement regarding orientation, um, which I thought was reasonable. They left the orientation. Um, uh, really open up to us and what our standards are and what's required federally. So that's why they didn't put where it says proper orientation and they didn't define what was proper. That's left to us to define to ensure. But everything else, um, the choice of law, we're willing to change that to New Hampshire. And if you look at page three, uh, we had talked about, you know, the the uh, 36 hour guarantee and we're not responsible for that if the person calls out sick did you, did you um, do this Lori? I sent it to them with the um, recommendations that we had talked well, about well no I was going to thank you it makes it much easier I when the uh, changes are in um, they different colors yeah. so we can yeah. Yeah. tell what we what were looking at I hear a motion to accept the contract. I'll make a motion we accept the contract with Prime Time, prime time Health Care. Second, but I, have a, I do have a question. Go ahead. So, uh, this is, this will serve as our overall contract with the facility, and but we will also have some sort of supplemental contract for each individual that we hire through the company. I don't understand a supplemental contract. Well, this is the contract with them. Right, and they provide. We the still people. need to. Yeah, a, a higher contract for the number of hours. Is that what you're referring to? At what rate? Yeah, once they come in, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. they have to sign that orientation. Oh, yeah. They have to have a, you know, an offer letter that yeah. falls right in line with this, so it's the same terms and conditions that. There's no offer letter. Well, we well, never. We want to step back from that. No. We don't want to have any arrangement with a individual no. unless we get into an employee arrangement, personal service contract. The person they send us will require orientation, documentation, and all kinds of things. But we're still dealing with prime time. We never want to have a personal service agreement with a individual. Although we'll require anybody they send to comply with certain standards and requirements. Just to be sure that they never become and I don't by want accident an employee. Or to be considered a relationship employee. Right. Because they're not an employee. They're just like 
a widget. They're not buying a widget. Not they're not buying a widget. That's what we're using it for. Yeah, they're, they're prime times and more. <coughs> right. It's their employee, not ours. Uh, at this point, we have not talked about our needs. Um, this is the basic contract. So I, the next step would be I would talk to them, say what we're looking for, a 40-hour, 11-7 to 7 nurse for this amount of time. I would expect there would be something, agreement that we are, will be signed. Something to that, I mean, it, it, cause, because we have to sign a guarantee that we take a month for weeks. I have not yet got to that point, but I certainly could share that with whoever. Okay. I just have some concern that since this person is an employee of this company, this person is also an individual that is on our premises. I would agree. We <laughs> so would be working there needs to be something that. more than yep. just this yep. agreement with this company. We need to also, we need to contact our attorney to make sure that that part of the widget, the widget doesn't end up suing us individually as a person. Okay, that, I think we just need to make sure we're covered in that. All right. Okay. In that aspect of things, because they're still on our premise, premises, this covers them in that sense, but we need to, we just need to make sure that there's no, there's bright lines, that this person is, never crosses that line. The comparable scenario here that, that, that might give it a better perspective is the, 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 the people who work for Genesis Rehab are not our employees or staff members in any way. We contract with Genesis. Genesis maintains the employment agreement with those staff members. This would be exactly the same. So instead of Genesis, this would be prime time. Right. And we and we do work. they sign an orientation letter? They don't. Oh. We do require Genesis so to provide an orientation. We require Genesis to provide an orientation um, because that's their their employee. This nurse would be signing an orientation agreement. So the orientation, they are they are responsible for ensuring that the nurse is skillable to come work at the building. We are responsible for the orientation and we'll be signing all of our orientation, our HIPAA, our Trade in the contract. Yes, right. The client is really responsible. Yep. The liability is they are purchased through them, they provide the liability. But as far as the orientation to our building and our residents, we are responsible for that, and that will be done. Okay, well, once again, I'll reiterate that all those forms that you're having them sign, we need to make sure that it fits in with this contract and isn't the very same forms we're using for our, for our own employees. We need to make sure that that is proper and that that aspect of things should be reviewed by our attorneys to make sure we're not making a mistake and blurring the lines of whether this person is our employee or they're a contracted employee. Because if they sign the same form that says they're following all the same things, but it doesn't say that doesn't say that they're a member of this company that could get us in trouble. That's what I'm saying. If we need to make sure that that component is still in line with what we want it to be, so we don't end up with them being litigating it, whether or not they were really our employee or not, if they so they, if, if they do litigate, it, it would go through Primex, correct? They would be the ones providing our defense. Mm -hmm. I sent it to Mike Ricker. He sent me what needed to be changed. Um, and then we sent it to our attorney with the same questions. And and he ident almost identically had the same uh, responses. I will send it to Primex one more time. Uh, with these changes and talk about the employee versus widget um, uh, relationship and to see if there really is one. And I can provide. And I'm going to ask them about the, the orientation. I can to provide you the forms that we would use to see a primary. Yeah, case. because I think the commissioner makes a good point. If they're signing as an employee, would they be considered an employee? Yeah, I'm just concerned, like, they're agreeing to follow our rules yeah. and regulations, and what if it says, as a Carroll County employee, somewhere on the form, that mm -hmm. they're signing, now we blurred the line. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that everything they sign also is reviewed and yeah. falls Absolutely. in and continuity with this contract. Yeah, and we have the federal requirement on any contracted uh, 
clinical services that come in their their guidelines. So that we have to do a minimum of three days, and there are certain things HIPAA abuse, right. which are all standard federal forms. All long term care facilities use the same forms. So I'm sure there's not some on there to which we can get copies. Mr. Batson. Um, no, I was just going to point out that, that we'd already sent it to two different law firms and they hadn't found any problem with it, so if you want to send it again, that's fine. I mean, I would feel more comfortable sending him the employee forms, make sure that there isn't good. any consideration yeah, that's going to be important. <laughs> so, so can we sign this, at least get this going, and then... Um, we have a motion to do this. Yes. Do we have any more comments regarding the contract with Prime Time Healthcare? Yeah. yeah. Why, why do we have to sign it if we're going to send it out for... for we're not sending time? this. We're sending her... We've already sent this out twice. No, no. This we is should sign this. Right. Because we're going to start with Prime Time. And they have to send us something, too, about the employee. In the meantime, I'm going to send our forms to Mike Ricker to make sure that there's no blurred lines between the employee and the witness. Mm -hmm. Well, this would actually be signed by... Probably how we. I mean, is there anything? I've signed it. Okay. Any further comments? All those in support of the motion say aye. 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 And so voted. Uh, that's it. Anything else? Um, how you, uh, are you going to call Mark or do you want me to? Oh, Mark Porter? Um, no, I'll be glad to. Okay. Yeah. And we could set something up so we can come in and talk to the yeah. So maybe next Wednesday would be great. Yeah, next Wednesday is good. If, what, what time should I tell them? Uh, 8.30. 8.30 is good. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That will be fun. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, is the uh, the delegation letter. I I made the corrections that we talked about last week, <coughs> which was one word, wasn't it? We no, cuts in expenditures. no, it was a couple couple things. Uh, instead of taxpayers of Carroll County, we put citizens of Carroll County. Um, you know, there was the appropriation change, um, and we rewarded uh, uh, the, the um, budget increase, that, that, uh, that middle paragraph, we kind of rewarded it a little bit. Um, so now you want to put it on Letterhead. It needs to be put on letterhead, yeah. This is the draft that Commissioner Algren has right, and that we, put together we did for it, us. Right. Mm -hmm. So really the only thing left to discuss is the last paragraph. Hmm. I'm going to read it to the public, David, so that they know what okay. we're talking about. The commissioners have instructed the county administrator to ask the department heads to identify possible cuts in expenditures to be entertained in subcommittee meetings. During the subcommittee process, along with the finalization of last year's revenues and expenditures, we should be able to find a combination of adjustments that will best serve the citizens of Carroll County. And the question is whether well, we... Well, I'm a little confused because uh, I, I get mixed messages here. From yeah. We got it, so I'm not sure. Um, you have met with the department heads, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. And we've met with uh, two subcommittees. The jail is done. And they, and they uh, took out 12000 for overtime. Right? I think that was so. it. Yeah. The sheriffs. Um, Excuse me, but some of those members of that subcommittee meeting voted in favor of a $2 million reduction after they've okayed the budget and the jail is the second most expensive facility we have here. Doesn't make sense. But they voted for the budget for the jail. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and the sheriff dispatch. First meeting went went fine. The second meeting, which was last Monday, was not a full. There wasn't a quorum. Mm -hmm. um, so we really couldn't even you know vote on that. But the overall census was that it was good the way it was. Um, that. The, that, that the sheriff did a good job. Uh, it was pretty much a flat budget, is what they were saying. Um, so that's two subcommittees saying that the budget so far there's there's no real reduction uh, other than twelve thousand um, dollars. So is this? So that's the sheriff and the uh, dispatch. Yeah, that's right. three. Right. To the jail, the sheriff, and dispatch. Well, sheriff dispatch is kind the of same thing. Yes, yeah, but for the purpose of the total budget. Yes, it, it is separate. You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, and then on Friday we had another subcommittee for multi two group two, which is the commissioners, the uh, IT, IT, my budget, the HR. admin building, HR, HR. Um, and only Representative Umberger showed up. She's so only they there. didn't have a quorum for that one either. Didn't have a quorum for that either. Great. Was anything conducted? Yes. Uh, we went. Um, we went over some cell phone stuff. Uh, she didn't understand some of the uh, why there was such a big price difference. I explained to her that you know some are smartphones. They have a data plan. Some are flip phones. Um, so once we got over that, we were talking about the health insurance is up 10 percent. Um, mileage? Mileage reductions. Uh, then we touched on education and conferences. And I had to correct her because I, she had said it was a 30 percent increase. And to me, that sounded like a whole heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. So I went back and I looked. And um, in last August, I took out $4,500 <coughs> from education and conferences. Um, to transfer it up. Right, because they asked for cuts and, and, and you know, I gave it to them. Um, and so she was taking it from that, from, from that budget. And I said that, you know, so I recalculated, it's about 17% increase. Um, so, which, you know, it's still a lot, but it's not 30%. Um, but it's back to the original? Well, it's a little higher because, you know, I wasn't here a full year, and I, only, I think I only had like $500 in my okay. budget. Um, and so um, we, we discussed what was training, what was the conference, what was, um, uh, what, were, what were we planning on doing. Um, you know, she wanted who was going to go to what conference. And I said, it's February, you know, I, I don't know what's coming up in yeah. September, October, November. And again, we did this budget in November, so that's a whole year away for a lot of conferences. But we did discuss that the nursing home has a lot of educational throughout the year um, with the hospital association and with the uh, uh, nursing, uh, with the New Hampshire nursing home uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, do a lot of, uh, they, they do a lot of in services, which. <coughs> How he needs for his license, and Lori needs for her. You know, I mean, these are these are professional licensed professionals that need credits credits to maintain their their professional license. Yeah. Um, so you know, we talked about that, and, um, and then we moved on to from there. Uh, I do have sitting on my desk that I saw this morning. The agenda that was the New Hampshire Association of Counties meeting uh, up north um, with all the educational programs on it, if you need that for documentation. Yeah, I but that was for last year. Last year, yeah. Yeah. Yep. She wants this year. We don't have it. That's yet. what I was trying to tell her. It's way too early for that. But based on what's happened in the past, you can expect yeah. similar things going to happen yeah. in the future. And so I told her, you know, there were probably three conferences we would be going to. Uh, the Association of Counties Conference, the, um, uh, the New Hampshire Municipal uh, Association has a lot of educational conferences throughout the year. 
Um, and also, Chuck is looking into doing some webinars here, so more people can can do it here mm -hmm. as opposed to traveling. Um, so, but but by the end, you know, I was a little frustrated because you know this is another meeting I went to that we couldn't even, you know, we we couldn't even do anything um, because you didn't have a quorum. Right. I mean. Uh, while we're at it, if we don't have a quorum, the minute say we discussed, who's we if there wasn't a quorum? She was the only one here, right? She talked to herself? No, I was here, Chuck was here, Commissioner Alderman was here. Oh, she's referring to I the, think the, the yeah, whole group. Here, right. John Rich was here, Wynette was here. Normally in minutes, those in attendance are listed in the minutes. There isn't anything listed here. I mean, it doesn't even say they didn't have a quorum. Yeah, I think I, I, I think that should really that be in there because, or what, but. because this is kind of saying that you know something was uh, you know we actually did something. Uh, oh, and we, we did talk about the TAN's interest because when we did the budget, it was November. We hadn't even paid off the 2015 TAN yet. Um, and last year's TAM was 1.5. This year's was 2.7. Uh, but uh, the treasurer renegotiated with the bank and they reduced it to 2.37, which is still substantially higher. Um, point, point of information, please. It was recorded. What's that? That meeting was recorded. Okay. Okay. I was here. Okay. Yeah. It's just in the official minutes that yep, at understand. some point in time somebody's going to approve it, I assume. Well, it's uh, almost like the conversation taking place without the acknowledgement that, you know, there is record beyond okay. minutes. Okay. <clears throat> um, but anyway, so, so, you know, I told her, you know, that we have to put at least another 150, 200,000 in for the TAN. Ken, is there an opportunity along the way to renegotiate this team's contract? I, th I think it's where it's as low as, it, as, as the bank's willing to go. Um, uh, Chip worked with them for about 40 minutes, and I'm surprised he even lowered it that. But, um, <coughs> well, I'm like, go ahead, Jack. At a previous meeting, I, I thought we were going, the, the treasurer was going to pursue other alternatives after we had secured this TAN. Probably not this year, with all that's going on. Um, if we cut two million, we may be back asking for another supplementary budget next September. Oh, we will be if we cut two million down. I mean, we're going to right back to where we were last year. Oh, and that's another thing we talked about. Uh, we walked. Mr. Oliver and walked uh, Representative Umberger through the whole scenario mm -hmm. of, you know, because I actually said, you know, where did you get this $2 million from? And, you know, and it's apparently it's from prior to the supplemental budget to this budget. That's where the $2 million came from. It's like, you know, it's like the supplemental budget never existed. Um, so is the $2 million came up because of the supplemental budget of $2.4 million? That, that's what they th and and they think that that is that what they think or they, she thinks they think that we had another million and a half in expenditures because that's what she said expenditures and we're like we 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 walked through essentially what this letter talked about mm -hmm. that you know we let we took the total but in more detail you went through right. a lot of, you took yeah we as we discussed at the last meeting we looked at the total from last year's budget, we subtracted the million dollars, and we took the total of the proposed budget, and we subtracted the two million dollars, and the numbers come up to total, the total amount of uh, increases was $257,000, and the BEAS line on its own is $427,000. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we also talked about the list of the FISC's cost, as you might recall. I'm sorry? We also talked about that she did have the list of the fixed costs yeah. of the 1.8 and then also the variable costs of the 1.4 million. I'm sorry, the total cost of 1.8 and then the fixed cost of 1.4. So we submitted, or 
we had previously submitted at the delegation the meeting motion. that it was the fixed cost would be one point four million dollars more than last year's budget in total. That's and that there's I guess four hundred thousand dollars and I guess what you could coin as discretionary. <laughs> but you know, so so we walked through that um, procedure and we did come to an agreement on what last year's budget less deficit reduction was. We did come to an agreement what that number was at twenty eight million four hundred and sixty nine thousand and more digits, but four oh eight. Yeah, four oh eight. Yeah. So what was the figure on Chris? Twenty eight thousand four sixty nine four oh eight. Twenty eight. Yeah, and, and and you know, something kind of struck me <clears throat> odd was um, at the delegation meeting I did give her a packet of all this. And she did say that she didn't get it from me and she was waiting waiting for it. But I, I said I had already given it to her. And um, so she made it sound like I didn't I, I hadn't given it to her, but I already did. And she said she looked at the first page, and then she didn't look any further than that. It was on the second page. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I'm i just, I don't know, I, I don't think they, they really understand what $2 million is going to do. I mean, I got a letter, I got an email from her last night, which is in your packet, I believe. Uh, it's also addressed to some of the uh, some of the some of the delegation members. It looks like the subcommittee chairman. Um, and and I and, and I read these and I'm like I, I you know but like the first one I believe Chuck indicated that he had checked on outsourcing payroll which we did we we looked at two different companies. Um, and you know the one uh, one company was seventeen thousand five hundred dollars, and I mean I think she thinks that outsourcing our our payroll is going to save something or we we've still got to send whoever that company Chuck is spend all the two days getting the information. All together. they do is put it together, and 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 we get our pay we get all our checks from the bank for free. They send mm -hmm. us all our checks. I mean we get boxes and boxes of checks. And why is she even asking the question? You sat right there at the delegation meeting and answered the question, or Chuck did, that mm -hmm. it was going to, why are we going to send out something that we're going to pay for? <coughs> we're going to have to give them all the information. Because we, we can hire a part-time person <coughs> for <coughs> less than that. Yeah. And, they'll, and they can work every week, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I think Go ahead. we've done the the research, we just need to put it down on a piece of paper and send it off to her. I think that's I sent it to her with, with a payroll? bunch of questions. Yeah. All the questions she sent me questions before we had the delegation. Oh, and that was one of the questions and I oh, oh, oh on the payroll. Oh. Hmm? oh I'm sorry, I, I was not copied on that, so I guess I just second didn't question. See it. Uh how many vacant positions does the county currently have? So I think she you know, by but by not filling those you know, we got four in the jail right now, right? And you know, I, I did do that, and I did send it off. Uh, that that was one of uh, Representative Cordelli's questions that he asked, and all those questions he asked. Vacancy. Um, I have it somewhere, but um, how do we, how do we advertise for the jobs, and what the costs associated with advertising? Do you post the positions on the county website or some other electronic place? I don't know how many times I've answered this. I've sat here in several meetings and, and I mean, told what the cost is that I've been signing checks for the last two years. I, mean, I, it, I, I don't know whether they don't listen or they claim to watch the tapes and they don't or what, but that's been answered at least at least a half a dozen times. And we advertise every position on the website. And everything is on the website. I understand that the commissioner said at last commissioner's meeting that 16 people would have to be laid off to meet the cuts the delegation recommended. Would you please provide the 16 positions? That would be very good. I don't think the commissioner morale. said that. Huh? I don't think the commissioner. We said were talking that. about what two million dollars would would yeah, right. do. Yeah. You said you'd have to. I had to lay off some people, but 
by the time the budget's passed, it'll be April already. We've already spent three months of salaries. So instead of laying off 12 people, we probably have to lay off 18. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, and I, I, I don't I have I think the issues. answer is that it was based on how many people, the average of how much an employee gets paid. Absolutely. To compute about how many people it has to yeah. be laid off. It wasn't that we did some sort of detailed analysis. Yeah. analysis of exactly which people should be laid off. It was just the point of, and maybe that's missing from the letter, but the point of the letter was that the request is just too high of a target. It's just not a productive exercise for the administration to be partaking. When it's not achievable, it will only cause unrest. And it will put us back in where we were last summer. Same position. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that assessment, but there will be a lot less people working here. <laughs> I mean, if we have a budget, we stick to the budget, and we stick to it, you know, that doesn't necessarily be expenditure-wise uh, if we stick to it. The revenue was the situation where we had to have a supplemental budget because we just couldn't pull That was out. another question she talked about uh, last Friday was, was she said our revenue was down. That was our actual figures? Well, and we did it at the nursing home it was down. And skills is down. But um, those figures that you're talking about that were down were actual figures that we have already received as revenue and not what we had budgeted for revenue? Chuck gave her that, um, the revenue sheets that, that yeah. you have today. Okay. Um, <clears throat> number five. What is the income received from the water we sell to private homes? It's in the budget, right? Yeah. No. Well, no, it isn't. No. Yeah, it's under does revenue. It, does it show under revenue, or it doesn't take in any by any other? It shows in under revenue. And it's just a just but a it's, system. But it's what was billed and not <coughs> actual. Fifty-six, fifty-six thousand is about. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, and the last question, would you please check to see what it would cost to outsource both water and sewer? Outsource meaning maintain? Meaning getting a company in, in here to, to maintain those? To actually run it. Run the sewer system. Run the water and sewer system. I don't think that's going to be... And, and we'd have to go off our of RFP, we can't just... Plus, we get our water for nothing, and if right. somebody else is running it, we we're going to have to pay them for, the, for taking our own water. Right. Well, I, I think she's just asking, like I said, just try to get a quote for someone that you know to find out what they would charge you to come charge to come in and maintain it, do the testing, provide the maintenance. I'm, and and does under the license, does someone have to be here? Yes, they have. Well, on site. They have, they, two people have to be certified. Two people have to be certified. Yeah. If somebody's running a water system, they get certified. Well, I understand that. But do they have to be physically on site? That's sometime. a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Could you do it remotely? I don't know. But that doesn't solve. Probably it. could. What about the sewer system? Who's gonna? I don't know. I know a lot of companies that that do water, but I've never heard of anybody that. Does sewer around here? Or is sewer just pumping? We have to keep all the equipment going down in the holes. First of all, our people know our system, both the water system and the sewer system. They know when things happen, what they have to replace, where things are. They do have uh, pumps on hand. Should something go down, they can replace that pump. Um, I suppose it's an exercise to find out what it would actually cost to have somebody from outside come in. Yeah. It's like finding somebody who come and mow all our lawns, or plow all our driveways, shovel all our sidewalks. We had that done at one time for, I forget.
forget what it was. The ones of snow. Uh, the the snow removal snow. and it was over around hundred thousand. Ninety-nine thousand. Yep. Yeah. Um, so oh, that's from the same company that that does the court house. No. no. There were two companies. That we got bids from, and I don't remember where. <coughs> Um, but we used, uh, I think we used the RFP from the people who do the courthouse. Although that wasn't in good shape yesterday. Yeah, that's right. All right. So this is. We need know, to get so back to this uh, letter to the uh, delegation members. So we, we finish with this one. Well, we're jumping around. We started. Well, I mean, it, it all it all goes into one to the other. I mean, okay. the question is, what is it you want me to do? I mean, I think we go into uh, because we may be talking about personnel. We may have to go into non-public. Okay. But is there any problem with exceptional letterhead for this letter? To go to the delegation members? Only only the last, the last paragraph. paragraph. But is this what I'm doing? Am I am I doing cuts? Am I not doing cuts? Do, do we agree with the last letter or not? Are we going to go to the subcommittee and try to Because I thought last week I wasn't doing it. and then Commissioner Hogan and I started mm -hmm. having a, a little sidebar discussion on Friday. Well, this and last paragraph yeah. is what says the commissioners have instructed the county administrators because we did this three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We did ask you to do that. You said, oh, I'm going to have a department head meeting, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we asked you to ask them. Not, you know, We already did that. That's not saying you should go do it again. You, that was already done. Yeah. We, we, as the commissioners, during the course of that meeting said, and that we, you know, we had that conversation about the numbers and the cuts and why it just wasn't feasible and not productive. But then we did ask you, and you said you were going to, at that department head meeting, this was going to be the next week, mm -hmm. that you would talk to them all about making possible um, cuts. Reductions. I suggested that they, you did it. I suggested, I didn't, we didn't have a vote, but I suggested that you might try asking them to do a 2% cut, a 4% cut, and a 6% cut. D different levels of cuts, because sometimes that helps um, identify what <coughs> is the highest priority to cut, if you're going to make a cut, what would you like cut first? You know, it just kind of gives a chronology of that. Um, so that's that's what that was about. That's not about instructing you with this letter to go do it again. Okay. It's unfortunate that the department heads have not put forth anything that I've seen about cuts. They've all just like, no, we don't have any. So I don't know how productive that meeting was because during the course of the subcommittee meetings, they're not offering up any possibilities. So that's, I guess, from where I sit, maybe a little differential about what was maybe hoped for and what's, what's occurring. Commissioner Babson? Um, I, I don't remember that I voted for um, having came to go to the department heads. This budget was studied by Chuck and Ken and the department heads. They went over it with us. I'm sure if you looked hard enough, you could find $20,000 somewhere to take out or more. But the fact that they, they, they just arbitrarily represented McConkie saying, I want to drop the big ax and make it $2 million. It's something we can't achieve. I'm not willing to cave in here. I just. I think we should go, we, we did a budget, if they want, they're going to come back and, and if we say, oh, well, we can find 50000 then then next year it'll be the same thing, it'll be the same thing the year after. Um, we did the best job we could on this budget. Two million is not achievable, as Chris very eloquently explained in this letter, with a, with a BES um, tab. We're, we're, we're below what we did last year, and we needed a supplementary budget last year. I'm not in favor of, I'm in favor of handing it to them and saying, okay, I've written my four representatives and ask them where, as a taxpayer, where they could make, where they could come up with $2, $2 million 
So far, I've heard from Representative Nelson, who was the one that didn't vote in favor of it. The other three people haven't bothered. Uh, Avellino, Como, and, and Wright. I don't expect Wright to answer, because he never answers anything anyway. But I thought the other two would at least get back with some suggestions, and I'm betting they can't find two million bucks. And I'm not in favor of the last paragraph. I think we should just say, here it is. Um, you want two million, you find two million. Or come back in here with something that's reasonable. All the last paragraph says is we should be able to find a combination of adjustments that will best serve the citizens of Carroll County. Through the I, subcommittee process. I see, so no, I see no problem with that. You just did the subcommittee on, on three of them. I, I know it. I know it. Chris, and they came in, they're the same ones that voted to cut the two million. I don't disagree with That's that, but I'm idea. just I'm just saying uh -huh. that our position is that during the subcommittee process with <clears throat> with the final numbers and with the help of the department heads during the course of that, that we may we should be able to find a productive exercise in making some possible cuts. Perhaps, or adjustments, whatever it might be, adjustments in revenue, adjustments, you know, whatever the adjustments are. But that's the productive process, not trying to cut $2 million off, off of the budget. That's not a productive process. It just, the end result of that is not going to be productive, whereas the subcommittee process has the potential of being productive. And that's what... So far it hasn't. Well, it has the potential of being productive, and but, that's... But Chris makes a good point. These are the people that go back to the delegation and say, well, we couldn't find any cuts. We couldn't find any cuts. We couldn't find any cuts. So then vote for $2 million cut. If they do, then how foolish do they look? Yeah. No, if, if they came in and said, okay, we'll, <coughs> we'll rescind this and make it $50,000 or 100000 or 500000 something that makes sense. But to come in here and arbitrarily say $2 because we want to drop the big axe just doesn't tell you anything. I mean, it doesn't help. Um, and it's an impossible figure to hit. Okay, what do you want to do with this uh, letter? Well, you guys can outvote me. We got a motion to accept it and second it, correct? Yes. Any further discussion on the letter to go out to the delegation members? Seeing none, all those in support of the letter, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. Okay. Two to one. Um, so I'll put, put it on the letterhead letter before you leave. Can you sign yes. it? Because I want to get this out. Okay. And I will sign it because it's better than nothing. <laughs> well, no, wait a minute. You said, I'll sign it because it's better than nothing. But, or do you want to send it out with just two signatures? I'll send it with two signatures. You okay. just vote it. No, you can't you change your mind now. You want. I'm not changing my mind. I just, no, it's I the lesser of two evils. Well, don't sign it. I won't. Well, he can do what he wishes. He, yeah. No. You can sign it. Okay, okay. next. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Baxter, you're more than welcome to sign it if that is your, you know. You are a commissioner. <laughs> it is a Unfortunately, I agree entirely with what the two paragraphs say, so I'm going to bind. <laughs> you think That's the first time that you've ever been a bind, huh? <laughs> okay, I'm still a commissioner, rather, whether you agree All with right. it or not. So we signed the... We passed the delegation letter. Mm -hmm. I have one item here. Where is our 2014 audit? I'm going to ask this every meeting until we get it. Yep. We paid the bill. We told them that was the final bill. And that was like five or $6,000. Uh, currently... When are we going to get the audit? Uh, Chuck, uh, they, there were some forms for Chuck to sign. They sent them down. He signed them, sent it back. Then there was this question about the management letter. Was it in the same format that it was last year? Chuck said it's not going to be in the same format it was last year. Apparently there's a lot of redundancy in the management letter. Um, the management discussion letter. Um, so Chuck said, you know, I've sent you my, uh, my management discussion letter. Mm -hmm. What I feel is appropriate and that's what you're getting. So I want, uh, you know, I want my audit. They're, they're, they're quoting, you know, Gatsby or FASB or something that has to be in a certain format. But it, I looked at it. It is repetitive. 
a lot of what's in the audit it just repeats itself over and over again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Chuck said, you know, so I'm sending it, so send me my audit. We were given a deadline? Did we give Bolio a deadline? Well, well, not really. Not he really. said he gets a check. We he said, yeah, he said when we get the check, he, he gets a draft. So we, we haven't got it. Apparently we sent the check a, how yeah. long ago? Well, now there's other stuff. Two weeks ago? Uh, probably. The week before last. Yeah, the week before last. Friday before. The week before. Mm -hmm. He has the check. He said he got the check. You um, know, if he doesn't, if we don't get a 2014 by the end of next week, we ought to report that to the Attorney General. Attorney General, apparently, from when he called me, he said he was investigating that firm because of the, firm, the company up north. Um, and I just think he ought to be appraised of the problem that we're having. Yeah. We've got to get, we get through with this. I mean, he keeps putting us off and adding more, 5,000 here, 5,000 there. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah. He's bleeding us. Yeah. All right. So that's where we are. Okay. Fighting over the management decision. Well, if we change it, is he going to use that as an opportunity to ask us for more money? I don't know, probably. Yeah. I mean, well, it seems like paying. every little thing. You know, we told them the, 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 the last the bill right. said oh, final, final bill. Yeah. I mean, you can't keep adding stuff to it just so you can keep, you know, Billing us. Okay. You got something else, Mr. Uh, uh, the Albany Selectman meeting tonight. Uh, yep. We're scheduled to go on at 4 15. Um, yeah, everyone said they're going, so okay. I told us that we were going to go. Where is it? Does anybody know where it is? It's at the town hall. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Route 16. No, that's a different <laughs> world for him. You it's take Route 16 and you'll go, you'll go by it if you're paying attention. Or Is it on the left, a little oh, white, place? Yeah. white place? It looks like a church. Church, yeah. Okay. I don't worry. <laughs> if not, you can ask the sheriff. But we could get a weapon. Sheriff, do you still have here. a substation there? Yes, the office is still there. The office is still there. Okay. I bet we could get a webinar on New Hampshire geography if we. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else you got? Um, yeah. yeah, in your pack. Uh, I don't know if it's in your packet. Yeah, in your packet. Um, at at the Memorial Hospital on March 14th is a uh, there's a community health needs assessment, and uh, Sandy Ruka uh, from uh, the VNA sent it uh, to us. Um, it's sponsored by the hospital, but it's not at the hospital. No, it's not at the hospital. It's at the theater, theater in the, the woods. woods. And for those people who haven't traveled up north, ah, it's on Route 16 and Lower Bartlett on the ah. left-hand side, and you have to drive in quite a distance, and it's a huge tent that's back there. Uh, how far up is it? No Intervale. No it's before you get to the railroad. Is it roughly across Collin? the railroad from the railroad uh, station? Not the railroad station, no. The miniature railroad on the right-hand side, Hotman's miniature railroad. Right by the it's scenic view? The, across the street from that. Absolutely. North of that. Past there. scenic view. North of there, yeah. Oh, right before, right before that sharp corner there, when you get the Storybrook Hotel is on yeah. the right. Oh, well, it's way back. Well, it's way back. So it's in between the scenic view and the... It's on the straightaway. Okay. We're working, we're working right. it down. But anyways, it's apparently it's for... Um, uh, they need our voice to tackle tough issues like the chronic illness, healthy aging, substance misuse, mental health, obesity, early childhood development, and many others. So it's from March 14th from 3 to 5. It's on Monday. Um, and you can RSVP. <coughs> While we're at it, the name you mentioned, wasn't that the lady that I talked yes. to? Yes, Sandy Bruca, yes. From what happened VNA. to them today? They could not attend. They had an emergency in their office. Maybe she heard. I didn't invite it and didn't want to come. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, and she sent a, um, um, a visiting nurse a newsletter for you guys to read. Maybe you might be interested in reading it. I only made one copy because it's in color. I think you want to read that first. 
Okay. Uh, Cindy Ruka on the VNA is coming March 2nd to our meeting. So not next week, but the week after. And I think, is everyone done with the annual report? Um, except for Chip, you, and the commissioners. Well, I'm Wait a minute. Do you, is that, do you I guys want to send it to you? Like two three, three weeks ago. I'm, I'm addressing I, it. Hello? You're adjusting it? Uh, I'm You're addressing, addressing it. Are, oh, addressing it. Okay. Right. Is that what you want to submit? Yes. Are you sure? Well, if you want to uh, talk with the person who drafted it up, okay. um, fine. Okay. Make your suggestions. Okay. Because uh, you know, we want to get it in pretty soon. Um, the deadline was, was this past Monday. Yes. Ken yeah. here is the unfair position. <coughs> oh, thank you. I understand the sheriff is the first one that is in this year. Uh, incorrect. Oh, really? Will was actually. Will was. Will was. Okay. But oh, good. The sheriff was on time. It's not a race. He made a valid uh, he, he <laughs> attempt, though. The sheriff. It was both him and Will running down the hall with their reports. 214 and 213. Don't fire me. All right. What else you got? Uh, that's it. I do have uh, two non public sessions at some point. Okay. Um, do you have anything you want to bring up today? Notice that, you're, that you're here. He's going to meet with me tomorrow. Um, we're going to finalize the uh, lease with his attorney, I hope. Okay. And uh, Len's really working on uh, on getting the three things he needs to get done. Mm -hmm. He's almost there, so it's looking pretty good. So, oh, uh, you're holding up your own contract, right? Yes. It's not so, us that's holding you up. The well, just the requirement that we have that you have to <coughs> fulfill. It's just those vacation needs, along with the uh, nonprofit. I have to give it to <coughs> them before they'll certify the program. Yeah. I, uh, I sent the uh, changes to uh, Len's attorney. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard back from him, so that's why Len and I are meeting. Hopefully, because he's going to Concord tomorrow. He's going to hopefully meet with him and go over some of the changes. So we're going to touch on tomorrow before he goes. Okay. Um, Karen said that she might have a delegation meeting on the 29th. Is that what she told us on Friday? She was looking at the 29th. Um, right. We spoke to her today, and now it may not be the 29th. So. Yeah. No, I think, I think at that meeting she was... We we told her that we speculated that the 29th would be the next opportunity. And and I got the impression at the meeting she wasn't sold on that being the day. No. So. Well, no. I want to look at the last minute. But. Yeah, and it's going to be yeah. after February is March, right? So mm -hmm. March 31? Yeah. Yep. Uh, We've got plenty of work to do, I guess, when, we, you know, when March hits. I just want to make a little point, though, about the revenue numbers that are on this sheet that um, I don't think... To, because I, I checked the numbers for the for the nursing home revenue that's on this sheet, and this isn't right. This is not complete. complete. It's not <laughs> because it's all of us out for a couple weeks. Again, is this what we budgeted for, or is this actual what we have received for revenue? Do we know? Well, there's many columns. Yeah. So. I know there is, but there was many columns over the years, and we ran into problems. Because well, think about this. Though. I mean, this is. You know, sometimes it takes two, three months to get, you know, all of it in from, you know, DHHS. So, um, all I want, all the question is, is this the actual revenue mm. we put into the bank? Some of it is. Or is it most what we it budgeted is. for? It's mostly what we budgeted for. So it's not accurate at all? Yeah, it's accurate. Well, it's accurate for what we budgeted, but have we actually received it? That's the question. Do we have it in the bank? No. That's no. Not, no, because we're on a cruel accounting basis anyways. I know it. Modified, but yeah. yeah. It, you know, it's, it's not cash basis. The... Go ahead. You get us out of there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, well, this sheet is incomplete. There's still more revenue to be put in. Okay. So, and so that is tr true. Now, as far as the accrual of the revenue versus how much is collected, the accounts receivable um, for 2015 at the nursing home is on a reasonable track. Uh, better I, than it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely better than it was. Yep. The 2014 is at a number that is but the uncollected short, is less than three percent. We're short one hundred and fifty-eight thousand forty-two dollars, right? But that number is not complete. That number is low. There's a lot. There's a, a substantial so, amount that's so going to be included. About the second week or third week in February, and we don't know yet from our bank statements as to what's happened. Because the nursing home hasn't put it in, it hasn't sent it to us yet. Because Paula was out for a couple weeks of her okay. in law passed away. Okay. And she's the only one who does it over there. You don't want too many people messing around with the, uh, you know, so, with the cash so flow. What it tells me is if something happened to her in a car accident and she was killed, we wouldn't be able to come up with these numbers. Mm, I don't know. Well, she's important. I don't know yeah. about. And, you know, irreplaceable. <laughs> I mean, we can find someone who can do it. There's other people with the talent, but you know, she currently is the person who's, and she does a very good job. Mm -hmm. at it. No question about it. She does. And um, and we are on track. Okay. I, you know, I just received a report from her this past mm -hmm. week regarding the accounts receivables that show that we're on track and that the 2014 receivables are on track. You know, it's, it's a medical facility. To have some bad debt is normal. Our, our bad debt for 2014 is under 3%, and that is a reasonable amount of money for the... And that's not that we won't collect it. That's just all that's outstanding is under 3%. We're still collecting on some of it, and the end result will be even less. But those numbers are reasonable that, that are coming forward. I mean, we're well over our private pay. We're well over our, 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 our Medicaid room. Skilled? Well, you know, we knew that was going to happen. But that's looking really good for next year. Do we have a final report as yeah, to absolutely. what Paula was trying to get from the state? Is that finished or is that still ongoing? Well, that would be ongoing. Trying to get money from the state on that past <coughs> year's costs. That will always be ongoing. Because of Do we know how much she has collected so far? She has a, you know, she can tell us at one point how much how much she's collected. Okay. Yep. You got anything else? I know, sir. That is it for me. Any reports? Any reports from anybody? Anybody got anything else they want to bring up? Um, are, we, are we due for a jail inspection? Yes. <coughs> That's going to be up to you. As a junior member, the two of us have already done it. Yeah, they say, but water water experience for you <laughs> to go through and uh, inspect the jail. Well, I don't Cleanly know. I think my youth and inexperience. Safety. Right. <laughs> when when you do it, do you go with uh, with like Jason? Yes. Okay. So you know, like I did it. I, I don't think it's coming up. I did it about three months ago. Less. I wrote a report, sent yeah. it into the Secretary of State. Or well, let's put it this way. It needs to be done by the end of March. Okay. And a sergeant will go along with you, and you can go put up any doors you want to see. You can go into cells. You can go into showers, kitchen area, laundry area, upstairs in the attic, anywhere you want to go. Okay. And you can write up your report, and that report's going to go okay. to the Attorney General. Attorney General, right. Can we just follow up with Jason on the timeline? Huh? Oh, yeah. Just follow up with Jason on the timeline, just to make sure that that's mm -hmm. coordinated, because... Oh, uh, okay. you know why you just went three months ago? Because we were talking about it for six months prior to that. Oh, yeah.
Anything else? No. I just had to get that in. That <laughs> would be six months shorter than the last one, which was a year. And that's true. All right, we are going to go into non-public for um, two different want, sessions. Do you want to do like a public first? or? Yes, we are. Okay. I'm just getting to that. Okay. Public input. Damon. I'll we'll probably be looking for a copy of that letter later, but what, what's the message of it? I'll be glad to give you this one. Okay. And that's not... You should give mine. Uh, three posts of the final draft there. It is. They just have to sign it. We just have to sign it. Put on letterhead and sign it. Put on letterhead, sign it, and okay. send it out today. Okay. Okay. Any other public input? Class, you good? Just this, this thing. Just attending. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just read this real quick and see if I have any questions. You can check with Ken after. Okay. Okay. Seeing no other public input, to make a motion. Somebody to go into non-public. Make a motion to go into non-public sessions one and two on the RSA. A.3, paragraph 2, parenthesis C, matters which is discussed in public would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of the body or the agency unless such person requests an open meeting. Are there a second? Second. Second. Roll call. Mm -hmm. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Swanson? Yes. Mr. Babson? Yes. We're in 9.0. Boy, this is fascinating.